Welcome to Seaside Quilting Tutorials. My name is Terry, and today we're going to be making a harvest apron. And with the harvest apron, the type that I do, it has elastic across the basket pocket in the front that helps it to just expand so that you can put a little bit more inside your apron while you're gathering. So whether you're gathering eggs or tomatoes, to potatoes, beans, whatever out of your garden, or you're doing some weeding, um, you can even use it when you're out in your flower beds doing some weeding. It makes it a little handier that you can just stick the weeds in your pocket and you can dump it out in the garbage or your compost or whatever you do with your weeds um, afterward. So let's go ahead and see this how, how this goes together. It's going to look a little odd when you're cutting the pieces out, but as we get through, you'll see how it goes together. These go up really quick and easy, and they're really lovely to make, and they're wonderful to give for gifts, and this is a great time of the year to be taking a look at a different type of an apron. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So I basically use uh, two prints for this. Um, I have one print that is blueberries in the vine. This is folded in half. So it's 20 inches wide and it's 30 inches long and it's folded in half so that it will be 20 by 15. I, I have it in half. Now if you could cut two separate pieces that are uh, 15 by 20. That's totally fine. If you wanted a different piece on the front than on the back, um, that's absolutely fine however you want to do it I just left mine folded this is going to be the top where the fold is and um, this is sort of the inside of your apron and then the back side would be the back of your apron which is up against you when you have it tied to you and this upper part will be where your waistband will go along so that's pretty straightforward. You just cut that 20 inches across, 30 inches long, fold it in half, and you'll have your 20 by 15. So the only things that the only things that you need is your two coordinating fabrics. That's the first piece that you need. You'll need some uh, quarter inch or half inch elastic, uh, depends on what size you prefer to use. I find that the quarter inch worked just fine the last time that I made one of these and so that's what I'm going to be using again. This piece is cut differently. It is also folded in half and the reason why I'm doing two pieces here is um, just so it has a little more strength to it for the pocket to be attached to it and hold together well. Now if you were to use a heavier canvas for the back part of your um, apron um, or some other type of heavier fabric you could just use one piece that is 15 by 20 but since this is quilting cotton I want to make it a little bit durable, so I'm doing double pieces. Plus, it will look prettier on the back side. Not that we need to look pretty in the garden, but you know, it's always nice for them to start out pretty. So this is um, aged, uh, aged muslin. So it has kind of a crinkly look to it. Almost looks like it's wrinkled, but it's really not. I've already pressed out all my fabric ahead of time. This is cut 30 inches, uh, 34 inches wide, so from end to end it's 34 inches. And it's cut 21 inches in the height, and it's folded in half so that it will be, 10 and a half, be a 10 and a half inch pocket. Once again, if you were to use a even heavier fabric than this, like canvas or whatever, you would not need to cut two pieces. Uh, you could have just one piece 
and it would it would work just fine you would just you might have to do some adjusting and how much how wide you would cut it just because you're going to need to put your elastic up in here so for the front part i really liked using the double piece so if you were to use a heavier piece like canvas i might use that in the back and then use my prettier piece in the front um, but this is how i found it to work really well the aged muslin is a very sturdy fabric it's very strong um, i made one of these for a neighbor of mine that does a garden last year and she used it all year long and it held up really well and it's still holding up so just to go back over that measurement this is 34 inches long going from the left side all the way to the right side in height it's 21 inches and it's folded in half my fold is at the top part here and then I took a ruler and on each on from seven inches from the each side on the bottom of this where you have your your cut edges I made a mark so seven inches in from the left side and seven inches in from the right side make a mark and that's going to leave you 20 inches in the center of your fabric and then on the left side and on the right side you're going to measure three inches down from the top and make a mark and then you're going to take your ruler and you're going to align it with that three inch mark and the seven inch mark and you're going to make a diagonal cut with your ruler on that mark let me grab my ruler real quick so that I can show you. Just so that we won't have any doubts. So I took my ruler, I have my three inch mark right here and my seven inch mark right here. So diagonally, I made sure that each mark is on the edge of my ruler and then I made a cut diagonally across from mark to mark. So three inches down from the side, seven inches over on the bottom. And then those pieces will just come off. So on each end, we take those off. So now it's going to be 34 inches across the top of your fabric where the fold is. And it's only going to be 20 inches down here where the fabric's been cut. So these are your, your rough edges and this is your fold up here. Okay, so now you're going to do a stitch line where your fold is, you're going to do a stitch line from one end all the way to the other end, a quarter of an inch down from your fold. So go, you can use coordinating fabric, you could use a different um, oh, coordinating thread for your fabric, yes. Or you could use a different color thread or a thread that matches maybe um, whatever backing piece that you're going to use. I picked a green of the aged muslin that we, I felt would go well with the blueberries on the on the vines and um, so this is going to be my back piece and this will be my pocket in the front. Oh, I got a little bibbit running across when I'm cutting that. I need to get him before he gets in trouble. Okay, so do, go ahead, do your quarter of an inch mark from the left end all the way over to the right end. And that's right where your fold is. <laughs> all right, good job. 
set up my machine. So I'm just using a black thread. It blends in well enough with the dark green and I didn't have any green thread that's 40 weight. So this is what I'm using and I feel like it's going to blend really well. So your next stitch, you're going to do um, three quarters of an inch down from your fold line. So go ahead and you're going to do one more set of stitches down here. It'll be 30, um, yeah, 34, three quarters of an inch down from that marking. So by doing that, all I've done is I've made a casing for my quarter inch elastic to go through. And so you're just going to feed your elastic through that casing that you made. So I'm just going to do mine the old fashioned way. I know I have uh, some of the elastic pieces that uh, pull the elastic through. I'm not going to hunt those down right now. I have a pin right next to me and it just makes it just as quick to go through. So I'm just going to put my elastic on the end of my pin here and I'm just going to feed my pin down through that casing. Now if you feel that the casing is going to be a little too tight for whatever pin that you're using, you could also um, have stitched one inch from your fold down and that would give you a little extra space but I feel like my pin and my um, elastic is going to go through just fine for me and so you're just going to go ahead and you're going to feed that all the way through that piece and I don't cut I have a pretty long piece of elastic um, because I'm not entirely sure how much I'm going to use. I've always got several feet of this hanging around for projects. So I know you're going to need, um, at the very least, 34 inches. We're going to gather it up some so you won't need all of that but that's how wide your piece is so you want at least i'd say 40 inches just to be safe um, when i get to the end i'm going to stitch across this side so that i can gather it up and i'll show you that uh, when we get our elastic all the way through so go ahead and feed your elastic through and then i'll show you how we're going to do the sides so now i'm at the end i just have to finish getting my pin through where my stitching is and 
always getting me in a little trouble at the end, of course. <laughs> now, if you're using a wider elastic, just make your, your casing width a little bit wider is all. So if you're using half inch elastic, you would just want to sew um, an inch to an inch and a quarter away from your fold up here to make a wider casing. So it just depends on what width your elastic is. I know that the quarter inch work just fine and a lot of times we have some of that hanging around but you might have the half inch laying around. Um, whatever you have that's handy. Now I'm just on this end where I started, I'm just going to sew back and forth a couple of times just so that I can lock in this piece of elastic and I'll be able to cut this side off. Now I can cut this side of the elastic off and I don't have to worry about that and I can get the elastic out of my way. And I'm just going to leave my pin on this side for now until I see how much I'm going to have my pocket part be gathered at the top. Now I know it's going to be a little bit gathered, so I'm just gathering a little bit of it ahead of time. And then I'm going to be pinning it to the back side of my apron. Just meaning that the pocket is more in the front. And then your, your other coordinating fabric will be your back piece, so to speak. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to pin this together. Then we're going to sew around each side. And then I'll go ahead and show you how to make the ties. So the first part that I'm going to pin is from my 20 inch mark. To the bottom corner, raw edges to raw edges, and if you are doing this so that you have a, like say you have a different fabric that's going to be on the back side and your front side, this is going to be back side to back side because we're going to be flipping it around afterward. For me, it doesn't matter because both sides are exactly the same color, so it doesn't matter. And so I'm just going to pin this going across my bottom, keeping the raw edges together and nice and straight. I'm just going to go along, I'm going to pin this whole bottom, I'm going to match up the other corner to that other mark where, the, where I went in 7 inches from the bottom, and I still have my mark there in chalk, I'm going to match it up to this corner, and I'm going to pin those two together. And then I'll just go ahead and I'll pin the whole bottom because this should all match up to each other nice and even. And you don't need a lot of pins, just enough to have those pieces together. So I have it from my 7 inch mark to my 7 inch mark 
across the bottom part of that other fabric. I'm going to put one more pin there just to keep that piece straight. And then you're just going to go up your side. And this is going to end up kind of rounding when we sew it, but you're just going to kind of almost straighten that corner. It's kind of going to pucker just a little bit. I'm going to move that pin over probably about an inch from that edge. Just so I can kind of ease this piece around. And I'm going to put a a pin, but I'm going to put it kind of diagonally in that corner. So I can kind of work this piece around the other side. And I know it's a little awkward doing it. And when we sew this, this corner is going to kind of round itself out when we sew it. So it is a little awkward on that corner, doing the pinning and piecing it in. And then you're just going to go around the side and you're going to pin this going up the side. And once again, you're going to come to that next corner. So let's pin this kind of in the center part here. And we're going to get up here, and the same thing is kind of going to happen. We're going to round this out. So I'm going to put a pin in here kind of diagonally, because I'm going to work my side up like this. So I'm holding that corner where I put, where this piece is a corner right here. I'm holding on to this. And I'm bringing this up and I'm just holding it at this corner so that it's together and I'm going to pin this so that it comes up straight up the side keeping the raw edges together and since I already tacked this side of my elastic down I can go ahead and finish pinning this up to here. Now you're going to have some excess up in here, but this is where your strap is going to sew across the top of it. And so I'll pin it on top of that casing up there. You can use more pins if more pins make you feel comfortable, but you can kind of see how we've eased this piece of fabric in and around. So when it's sewn together, it's going to hang kind of a little bit funny, but it will create a pocket for you. And you'll start to see this more once we get this sewn. So once again, on this side where that corner is, I'm going to put, I'm going to move this pin down a ways. And I'm going to put a pin in this corner where that line is, my 7 inch line, and that corner of that other previous fabric behind it. I'm going to match the corners up, and then I'm going to put a pin in diagonally. And then I'm just going to hold that corner, and I'm going to pull this piece down. And I'm going to bring up my back fabric, meeting my raw edges together and I'm going to put a pin right here and when we sew we're going to sew it so that we come across and we're going to get right to about a half an inch from the edge and then we're going to pivot and we're going to come up the side and it it will have a point kind of there, but it's almost going to round itself out when we turn it, when we flip it around. So go ahead and pin up your side once again. It looks complicated because of the way that it's been cut, 
but it's really once you get used to it and you've done a couple of these they go really fast and they make a lot more sense after you've made one so when I come to the corner of this piece of fabric my front pocket and I come to that corner again where this piece is coming out straight where it's wider up at the top I'm going to do a diagonal pin from that corner again. And then I'm going to hold that corner and I'm going to match this up to the side. And I'm only going to put one pin in past that corner for now. And then I'm going to lay this down and I want to gather, you're going to lay it down so your back is as flat as it possibly can be on your table. Okay? So get that just as flat as you can on your table. Tuck it down if you need to. And you're going to gather this front with the elastic a little bit more until this green piece when it's held at this side will hold fairly even but gathered some and I'm hoping that you're being able to see how I have it gathered the amount that I want it to gather. So when this is sewn together and I flip it around, this will be my front pocket. And this part will be able to expand out but stay somewhat up there so it's holding my stuff in that I'm trying to gather into the basket part of the apron. So gather that as much as you feel that you want it gathered. And I just leave my piece hanging for now on the pin. And I'm going to pin that in place. We'll cut that elastic off after we've sewn it. So now I have it gathered the amount that I want. I'm pretty satisfied with it. I'm just adjusting it a little bit the way that I want it. And now I'm going to sew this all the way around. I'm going to start on this side. I'll end up, up off that side. I'm also going to do a reinforcement stitch up over this casing. So I'll start sewing above the, the fold line on my basket pocket. And I'm going to come down past my casing and I'll reverse back and come back down so that I reinforce this side real well. And I'll do the same when I end over there. <coughs> so I'm going to turn my machine down just a little bit so I'm not sewing as fast. And I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer so that you can see as I'm sewing it around how this is going. <coughs> and I'm going to do a half an inch seam going all the way around. That way I'll have a good enough seam so that as I'm putting vegetables in here or weeds in here, whatever I'm going to be using it for in the garden, I'll have strength in my seams to hold my product in there. So it's going to look like this top piece is, let me see if I can get it in the camera properly here. It's going to look like this is folded over a little bit. See how it's kind of folded? And that's all fine. It's going to, the way that it hangs after, it's going to sort of straighten itself out. 
It's just at the moment it's awkward because we haven't sewn our pocket on. That's fine. We're just going to keep this straight on this side so that we can sew. And we'll start right above that casing. I'm going to take that first pin out so I don't sew over my pin. And get this over to the half inch. Okay, so now I've got that reinforced. So now I'm just going to straighten out my back piece so that it's not bubbled up. I want it to be nice and flat. And I have my pin here. You just want to be careful of your pin. But I'm coming down until I'm about a half an inch where that little corner is on my fabric where... It was 34 inches wide up here, and we tapered it off by cutting it down. So I'm just going to come down until I'm almost a half an inch from that, where that little corner was. And I'm just going to pivot my fabric. And then I'll sew until I come down to where my 7 inch mark was. Now it gets a little tighter down in here. It wants to curl and pucker a little bit and we're just going to ease it out so you kind of have to push the fabric up a little bit. I'm going to take this pin out and I'm going to hold this piece in and I'm going to make my, sure that my raw edges are up against each other. And I'm going to sew until I'm about a half, a, about a half an inch from my corner so that I can pivot my fabric around. Now, I might get a little gather in that corner because of where they're meeting up to each other. That's fine. And I'm going to sew across the whole bottom. So all the way until you get to that next corner where that next seven inch mark is. And the same thing, you're just going to work at the fabric to keep it from puckering too, too much. You might get a small gather in there. And I'm going to come within about a half an inch on that corner. And then I'm... I need maybe one or two more stitches here. And then I'm going to pivot. Oh, probably one more stitch in. There we go. Now I can pivot it. And you just work at your fabric again, making sure that your raw edges are staying together. You might get a little pleat in there. That's fine. Remember, this is just, we're just going to be taking this out to the garden. We're gathering eggs in it. Of course, we want it to look nice if we're giving it away for a gift.
doesn't have to be super fancy. It's a utility apron. So once again, I'm at that corner or my next corner. I'm going to do the same thing and pivot my fabric. Straighten out your fabric. Just smooth across your back fabric. And just feel with your fingers, making sure that everything's nice and flat. Make sure that your raw edges are together. And just continue to do your half an inch. And we're going to go up past that casing. So right up past my casing. And then I'm going to reverse. Go over the whole casing in reverse and come back. That way you reinforce it real well. Cut your thread. And then you'll go ahead and you'll cut that excess of your elastic right off. Right at the, at the raw edge of your fabric. So you'll end up with a tiny piece of waste of elastic, but not a lot. Okay, so now we're going to flip this around. And because I used this, you know, I had this folded in half and I didn't bother to use two different pieces. It's the same on both sides. So I was able to just stitch it pretty easy. You can poke out your corners and you'll see that your corners have rounded somewhat. And that's exactly what you wanted to happen. They're not going to be 100%, you know, perfect corners. That's fine. We weren't expecting it to be. So now your apron looks pretty much like this. And it looks like your your two top ends are sort of folded in and that's absolutely fine. Don't worry about that. Once you have your strap sewn on this will actually come up a little bit more. And when it's when you have this tied to you, when you have this tied to you with your, your strings on it, um, this is going to stay up really nice and you'll be able to put your stuff in it and then this will pull forward and give you excess room and lean out as much as you need it to. So you can put quite a lot in here. The person that I made one for last year, she was hauling um, potatoes in her apron. She was hauling tomatoes, cucumbers, all kinds of stuff that was very heavy, squash and everything. And it made it so that she could go down a whole aisle, then come back to a bucket, empty it out, and then go down through the next aisle. And it just made it a lot easier than having to keep picking up that pail and moving it along with you. Okay, so your next part, we're going to make our ties that go around. So we cut two pieces of fabric, six and a half inch wide by the width of your fabric. This fabric, I believe, was 44 inches um, with the fabric. I didn't worry on the aged muslin about taking off the um, selvages because I was sewing a half an inch in. When I sewed them together, I did my seam at two and a half inches. So then I just ironed them open. Then I took my piece and I folded in half and ironed it the full length, the whole 70 something inches. Once it's, they're sewn together, um, they'll be 70 something inches. So I folded it in half and I ironed it all the way across. And then I took each side and I fold it into that middle fold and press it. 
So now it looks like this here. So I have each side, my raw edges folded into that center fold. And then I'm going to fold it again. And now it will look like this. And this is going to make a heavy tie but it will give it a lot of strength so that it, when it's tied around you, it's going to be holding up whatever bulk you're putting into your, your gathering harvesting apron. Now where I put it together, I'm going to center that approximately. For me, I'm just going to eyeball it. might just take my ruler and <laughs> measure it. So your two pieces on the ends from your half inch seam, these are going to fold in. And that's totally fine because they're going to go up inside of your tie. And you're going to be sewing a, a bottom seam. So that's going to catch that in there and keep that in there. So I'm just going to fold that across and try to get a little bit of an idea where my center would be. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Let's see, this is about 18 and a half, so right about there will be my half mark. Like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm just going to slide this fold at the top of my fabric right up to the fold in my tie and make sure that it stays up in there as I'm pinning this across I want this whole part to go up in there up to where my fold line is and fold over it and then I'm going to pin it down so that it's nice and flat So where I sewed my two pieces together, it's about right in the middle. Like I said, this end is going to fold over the way that your seam is. And I'm just going to make sure that that goes up inside. And when I fold this over, it holds that in there. And I'm going to put a pin there. So it will be literally covering up that piece that folds over. And I'm just going to chunk, make sure that that's up in there the way that I want it and it's laying nice and flat. And you can either use clips or you can use pins to go across. And I'm going to do the same on this side. I'm just going to tuck this over. Lay it up inside here so that I can see that it's reaching up to the middle where my fold is on my tie, on the inside of my tie. Straighten it out. And I'm going to put a pin in there. And then I just make sure that this is nice and flat here and laying up underneath where I need it. So the back side of my tie is on this side. It's on the back side like that. And it's folded over that top part. So if you had two raw edges up there, that's fine because the raw edges are going inside. Mine was folded because I, took a, I was going to use the same piece folded in half. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the center and I'm going to sew approximately a quarter of an inch from the fold on the bottom all the way across and when I get to the end I'm going to keep my 
tie together at the bottom where it's folded the two fold pieces come together and I'm going to continue to sew the same distance from the fold all the way to the end but before I get all the way to the end I'm going to fold these in approximately about a half an inch and fold it over so that once I come down to the end, and I'm going to put a little pin in there so when I do get down to that end, it will already be folded for me. And I won't have to worry about remembering to fold it in because that will tack off your end and you won't have any raw edges down there. It's a little bit thick of fabric, so I'm going to do it just a little bit before I fold it. And I'll do the same on the other end. Just approximately a half an inch in, just fold it over and then fold it over again. And either put a pin or a clip in there to hold that together until you get down there. And then you know that you're going to be sewing straight across that as well. I'm going to use my left edge top stitch foot, but you can use your straight foot if you want. I just like this foot better. It does, it helps me to guide my fabric. Whatever works best for you. And we're just going to be doing about approximately a quarter of an inch from the fold. You can do a little bit less if you want it to be, you know, over a little bit more, that's fine too, but we're just going to do kind of close to the edge, but not exactly on the edge of a stitch. Take a look at the back side to make sure that you're catching the back side, that it doesn't pull up on you, that you're catching both sides as you're sewing because you want to be sewing both of them down onto the top of this, of the back side of your apron. reinforce it where I go across that elastic casing I'm going to go back and forth just so I reinforce it a little bit and then like I said I'm going to continue to sew right across the tie of my apron so that it stays together to the end I'll go ahead and take that pin out that reminds me that I already have my fabric folded in at the end and I'm going to get a you know about a quarter of an inch from the edge and then I'm going to come up the side so that I get this all sewn at the end of my top. I gotta go back a couple of stitches I went too far Or maybe I didn't. Okay, there we go. And then I'll 
I'll just reinforce the end of that. And then I'm all done on that side. And so, so now I'm going to keep my stitching the same distance from the edge. to that casing again I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to go and I'm going to stitch over it and then reverse to reinforce it and then I'll continue to sew across my tie so that I can lock this part down This one I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come to about a quarter of an inch from the edge. I <laughs> decided to go further than I wanted it to go. Okay. And then I'm going to sew cr straight up the end so I finish it off. Whoops, helps if I go in forward. And then before I finish off, I will go in reverse and lock in those stitches. And now I'm done on this side. So now we have our harvest apron all done. I'm getting my fingers so that they're not in the way. It's all done, and as you can see, this part where we did the gather, it will expand out so that as you're putting things in there, whoops, I don't want to pull her forward. Um, but as you put product in here, this will expand out so that you can put more and more um, in there. The aged muslin holds up really, really well working in the garden. It makes a nice, strong apron. And I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. This has been our Harvest Apron. This has been Seaside Quilting Tutorials on Seaside Quilting Supplies uh, YouTube channel. We hope that you will take a moment and like the video if you have found it helpful. And we hope that you will... Uh, subscribe and right next to the subscribe button there is a little bell and if you click on that bell you can set it to all and as we bring you um, more and more tutorials um, helpful tips for sewing and quilting 
and we often show our new fabrics as they're coming in and so i hope that you'll join us again happy sewing